Alrighty guys, back with part two of round two here at the 2018 Ed Hedrick Hall of Fame Classic out here in Appling, Georgia. We currently are in Martinez, Georgia at an Airbnb, but Kevin Jones is sitting to my left, giving us all the color commentary action here. Hole 10, par four, 606 feet. What's the play here? Well, ideally, I'm throwing a flippy fairway driver. The hole bends slightly sharp to the right, so you really want to make sure you get the flip on it. And there is a grouping of trees right about the bend of the fairway. And if you can pass that grouping of trees, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got an easy birdie, but it means you have a chance. You're in scoring position. Exactly. Basically. MJ going with the comment, just really trying to get to that landing zone. Yeah. Um, I think he pinched himself a little bit too far to the right there, um, but he is at least not in the rough. Yeah. And Greg is going what looked to be around those three trees, but he cut in front of them. That's going to be an okay spot. But it is a little bit on the right side of the fairway. On the, you can become slightly pinched on the right side, but I bet those guys will make business of it. Yeah, I think the tunnel or like the landing zone might be smaller on the right side, but it is a more open tunnel. Whereas the left side, you know, you're probably less apt to getting in trouble early, but it is a little bit more cluttered late. You finding yourself a little bit off to the left side there. Not quite the turn you were looking for. Yep. Um, Need to pop it a little bit more and get it moving to the right, and Zach catches those th one of those three trees. And I mean, he's on the fairway; he's got a straight line. But at this point, he's probably four hundred, you know, three eighty to four hundred away from. The yeah, ground. this is a very difficult shot to execute for a birdie look, but he's got what looks to be a step putt, which you know, if we've seen the front nine coverage, is probably in his wheelhouse. Absolutely. MJ taking Comet. us around Comet. the world. He went stabler comment and then flippier comment. And that's unreal. Wow, what a shot from MJ. MJ. Like, he's not going down the middle of the fairway. Rather, yeah. throwing a, a an Anheuser flip shot with a Comet all the way around the trees and just dragging it toward the basket. Little, ooh. Ooh, Kev. Yeah, I think I might still have a bruise on my hand from that one. I was going to say, giving it up, that's commitment to the craft right Yeah. There. And you're, you're up there, though. Absolutely. I, 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 it wasn't necessarily worth the bruise, but <laughs> sometimes you got to take risks in disc golf. That's true. Um, and there were biscuits to be had for the risking. Oh, hands. yeah, there is. A big old birdie. Zach from, from really from way outside at this point. Oh, he's moved. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, man! So I if I I'll take Zach on my card every time. Yeah, man, his his jump putts are looking great right now. They're all over the basket. As I missed the mark, MJ there finding his groove. I like that. He's got birdie on nine, birdie on ten, and all of a sudden he's rolling. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's that's all it takes though because mm -hmm. it, he wasn't struggling nope the putts just weren't falling so exactly. all of a sudden the putts start falling it's like oh huh i am playing incredible yeah that's one of the cool things about this course is it's not necessarily birdie or die so once you string together a few birdies you're moving up exactly i mean we saw Macbeth on our round one coverage he really stalled out he was two three down not really doing much and then four in a row birdie 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 to end all of a sudden seven down lead card one straight yeah. off the lead it's like like you said, you avoid the absolute big numbers, avoid the trouble, and you can string a few together late and have a great round. Yep, that's how it works out here. MJ and Greg taking the birdies there. MJ kind of arguably more impressively. <laughs> but we are moving on to another new hole. I believe this is the fifth of six new holes. 420 feet of really turnover or sidearm action. Yeah, it could be. Now, if you're throwing a sidearm on this hole, you've got some world-class sidearm distance. Yeah. It's all a 420, and it's a hyzer angle out of your hand. I don't believe you can reach it throwing a flat angle. MJ, was that a crank, maybe? If everything that he's throwing that's high-speed driver is a crank, except for the one soft blue Undertaker. That, <laughs> that was a crank. Then. Yes. Greg, now this, that... And you notice that's on that hyzer mm -hmm. angle, like you said. Yeah, that is ideal, and even Greg's distance yeah. is not penetrating this pin because that was so perfect out of his hand, I thought. It's it's surprisingly more right than it feels. I, I think Definitely. I think you gotta you gotta like honestly miss right. Like this is That's missing right for sure. Oh wait oh. a second. Uh -oh. 
that's how that happened. Okay, it looks short, right? And then we get up there, and it's like, hey, this is 23 feet. Yeah. So this is this is the preferred version of Greg's line. Like, it's a much better lefty backhand yes. than it is a righty flick. Simply because you can torque it just a little mm -hmm. bit harder, get that hyzer to stand up and push straight. And that's another one I thought was going to be within the circle, but we're still looking at a step putt. Yep. I mean... Oh, MJ, I thought he was going to wizard that one in. Yeah, completely all over the basket. He's going to be dropping bombs here in a second, I think. Oh, Greggy Big Putt strikes again. <laughs> that is so much fun to watch. Am I wrong? No, it, you're, it is an absolute... <laughs> it's almost more fun, though that it's greg doing it like yeah. you could have other people where it's just silence and nothing but then you got greg and Boom. Zach out here dropping bombs and they're just buckets of fun yeah take notes guys another step putt from zach melton that's huge that's a great putt too yeah so let me ask you you just got in theory you just got big putted right greg yeah. and zach hit huge ones i mean hit outside the circulars yep and you have you know, a very makeable, but at the same time, a very missable putt. Absolutely. Is that, do you, would you prefer, like, the hot fire right behind you and it just keep in the rhythm, let's say we are hitting putts? Or, I mean, not prefer, but, like, does that get in your head in a good way or does it get in your head in a bad way? Um, It's in my head simply enough. I'm not sure if it's good or bad, honestly. <laughs> but the fact that it's in there, it says it, something. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Part of it makes me want to hit the putt more. Yeah. But another part is you shouldn't be thinking about that focus yep. on the putt and the task at hand yep here we go this is a 990 foot par five <laughs> it could be a two-shot hole if you are will shoestrick throwing pd rock to the pen mm -hmm. or johnny mccray in round one throwing something something but getting the eagle air shot air shot yep. to 15 feet i heard about it oh that's incredible greg turning it over a little bit too much out of his hand He's asking for it to kick back in the fairway. Which it does. It was behind the tree. And not to kick. It didn't kick to the center, but at least he's got footing. Yep. And now I'm looking like the exact opposite of what Greg did. And, yeah, this is just not what you want on this hole, guys. You really want to put it up in the fairway somewhere. Yeah, you need distance. But more importantly than distance, you need good footing. Um, yes. If you want to three it, you need both. But really... Oh. Oh, now that's unfortunate that I looked know. like it was tracking the fairway right and it just it, drew 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 all yeah. the way left right in there i believe that's his truth it is he do that same shot it was funny in round one uh, oh good tree yeah Keeps it was a good tree fairway. yeah um in round one he went truth explorer uh enforcer kind of played the hole backwards where you go he just worked his way huh? all the way faster yeah. yeah i like a hole that does that though because you have to see you see guys throwing the high speed stuff and mid ranges off the tee these guys both look like they're going for the left gap. I, I'm not I, – MJ definitely is now after that kick. Yes. But. I, I think, honestly, the angles at which they – they didn't have a clean route to that right side gap, especially uh -huh. Greg. He had those trees right in front of him, and it felt like the angle too – with the flick on the turnover was the better shot. Yep. Zach's laying out to the landing area, trying to have an option, maybe an attacking route for birdie, and that's – Such a forgiving kick, absolutely. all things considered. Absolutely, that could have been anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, that kicks straight left. It's it's in trouble. Yeah. So yesterday, all four of our players go up the right side gap. I have Brian over the mics. Go right side. Go right side. Mm -hmm. Nobody got up to attack the left side. Literally, everyone's taking the left side. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It, it's a much tighter gap and v much more punishing as well. You can see right there. I mean, you threw a great flick right there on that turnover line, yep. forcing something stable over, and it catches this little cluster in the middle. It's so, I mean, unfair isn't the right word because the tree never moved, but huh. brutal maybe. Yeah, very brutal. That's why I prefer to go outside on the right side and have a hyzer mm -hmm. for my birdie look. And this is, a, I believe, is this Greg's... Uh, that is his third shot up yeah. there with the. He's probably flicking an eagle. If oh, yeah, I would bet it. This is the second patent pending of the hole, which yeah. tells you how hard this hole is. Good looking line. Great looking line, man. Unfortunately, you threw it great. I mean, you cracked it over enough, and it had the stability at the end. I, yeah, that's tough. Tough luck. Yep. Zach throwing the lucid deputy, I believe, just Smooth. on a Smooth. Little frisbee throw, really. Yeah, that's all it is. A little hyzer flip. Very glidey disc. And Greg, are you joking? Yes, you are. Thank yes. You. And thank goodness, too, because <laughs> if he puts that one in, we're all in trouble. Absolutely. MJ. There's MJ. 
so good, but you had to lean in front of the camera. We didn't see it go in. No. But great putt. He leans over to me. He's like, I took that gap just because you had the camera there. I'm like, yes. I love you. Oh, that's great. Trying to jab a putt in there. I was surprised to see you go with the jumper there, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it, it, dealer's choice, obviously. But Yeah, sometimes when I'm faced with a putt that I feel like is very crucial right outside the circle, I feel like it's easier just to jam it right in there with a jump putt. Okay. Everybody else cleaning up their cars. Going to be a bogey for me. Yeah. Not a very well played hole. I, I think I was off the fairway to off the fairway to off the fairway to off the fairway to outside the circle. I think that's probably right. <laughs> I mean, that's not, you don't, on six shots and none of them get a fairway hit, that's not good. Not how you draw it no, up. Oh, no. Uh, but we're moving on, and what we are moving on to um, is a hole that you can get. It's not necessarily a backhand uh, dominant hole, but you've got a good flick, and at 399 feet, all you have to do is, all you have to do, but yeah. hammer something flat and hard with that stability that's going to draw over to the right. That's right. This hole's awesome. MJ's going to go Undertaker here, which is... This is his Undertaker. I guess not exactly what I would think he would throw. I would imagine I he'd throw a Comet. But a 400-foot Comet shot is, is huge. huge, dude. It's yep. huge. I agree, though. I... I I know, just, I, I know where you're mine. Yeah. That's what he does, though. He throws Undertakers yeah. on, like, longer Comet lines. Mm -hmm. So he, A lot of times, for a while, he was telling me his Mantis was his fairway Comet. Uh -huh. um, I think maybe this swirly ESP Undertaker maybe has taken that, the mantle there. I bet it has. The natural lefty hole, though, oh, he does hang it out longer than he'd like. Yeah, that's pushing a little too far straight. You really want to be coming in harder and quicker early. I love if if guys if you go back and watch that shot specifically, palm to the sky. That the follow through on your wrist, I felt like was really. That's like exactly what you're looking for on that hard flat sidearm. It's so hard to do and not roll your wrist over, but keep that palm up. Yeah, that's something I've been working on this whole year. Definitely improved a lot, and that was a good run. That was a great me. run. Thanks for not waiting for me to get the good angle. <laughs> Maybe seventy feet, Zach. Oh, and he's getting some chain action from that from around the tree. And he says, "How do I miss that left side? How's yeah. that even possible?" <laughs> Greg, stop it! What are you supposed to do? Like, what do you do? You just you just like ride it out and wait for him to stop hitting fifty to sixty footers. Man, that is such a pretty looking putt, <laughs> and I'm hyped for him. That's great. Yeah, that was a good moment. I like that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And that's a half inch. I and think that's, that's the first mistake we've seen from him on the putting green, right? I was just going to say that's very, that's not Zach like. That may be no. the first mistake in both rounds. I've filmed him rounds one and two. Mm. I mean, he's been so clean and, you know, just lets one get away from him. You know, one over 18 holes or 36 <laughs> holes. I think you can sleep well at night still. I think so. Melton, though, does take that unfortunate bogey. Barsby with the birdie. Hey guys, I'm Spencer with MVP, and I'm out at the course today to talk to you guys about the long-awaited Neutron Deflector. The Neutron Deflector is an extremely overstable mid-range, able to stand up to any headwind and any power. No matter the shot, count on the deflector's ability to fight out of a turn in order to flex and shape your line to get you to the basket. Alrighty guys, again, huge thanks to MVP and and even more thanks to the deflector for being the most stable disc ever created by man. Kevin, you throw hard. I don't even think you could throw that thing over, man. It's like throwing a cinder block through the air. A deflector? I don't think I've heard of that one yet. It's it's very justice-y. Ah. Uh, it's the same type of deal though. But we just saw one of our par fives hold 12. Uh, we're gonna back that up hole 14 with another par five. This one is I mean, oh, really, it's no. equally as eagleable, but not from where Greg is going to go. No, sir. Greg actually took a hard kick straight yes. left all the way into another fairway. Hole one's fairway, if you remember that. We're going to be catching up uh, on that here shortly after MJ. That's a filet mignon again. Oh, my God. That, that is in that. 30 foot circle where you like draw up the yes, two landing sir. zones for your shot. That is right in it. If you have a big flick, that is technically eagleable. Mm hmm. I like this shot, man. The neutral fairway driver dead up the middle. I, I, 
A, I really like the way that you throw the not extremely stable discs, right? You, I think you do a really good job of hammering them flat, but that disc is just going to push, 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 and then just stop. Yep. It's a perfect disc for this hole. Punch something flat and let it finish just so, ever so slightly to the left. Mm -hmm. The left finish isn't even important. No, What's you important? don't, but that's the thing. You don't want that hard, like, even to risk the hard stability at the end. Yep, and here's another fairway that is not the hole we're playing. No, if you remember, this is hole one. So Greg oh is going to be goodness. chopping his way up hole one and then finding an air, an aerial route all the way to the pin. I think that was a good shot by him. But that's the problem. I think yeah. it was a good shot. I There's don't know. no telling. I don't know. We just missed Zach do kind of what you really don't want to do on your second shot, guys. Beating the trees that he missed or that he hit there is uh is the goal to get yeah. a easy birdie on this hole. That one that one came out nicely. Good left to right angle and Yep. I mean not to say that you're right there for an eagle, but you're looking at it. Yeah, looking at an eagle. I was happy with that angle and mm -hmm. that should be an easy birdie. Now Zach having to swing it in there. He's really getting aggressive on this one because he wants that birdie that he th feels like he just might have lost. Yeah, and that's a Im very impressive shot. I believe that's a Absolutely. biofusion getaway. Um, kind of, yep. he claims getting giving him that distance driver distance with the fairway control. Yep, something that pushes really straight and far with not much flex. I like it. Now, Greg, I thought he threw a tomahawk here, but that looked like a spike it was hyzer. Straight up backhand. Very strange. And that was from one's fairway all the way to <laughs> 14's green. And he's looking at a Greg Barsby 50 footer for yeah. Bird. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. That's incredible. MJ said the only time he's ever seen that happen is final round Hall of Fame classic. Can't quite put it down, but Paul nope. Macbeth took that line. Hmm. So that's going to leave you with maybe a, what, 26-footer? Yeah, a little bit more meat on the bone than I would like. Greg making a great run on it. He can't believe it. He's been in it all day from that distance. <laughs> I told him, Greg, all that work, and you couldn't just put that one in for birdie <laughs> for me? Are you serious, dude? You made me run. Sprint. Zach, again! This is great. Guys, take notes. Slow it down. Replay it. I, the... He, it's this guy's on fire, man. Yeah, he hit the first available on a second shot and still cleans up the birdie. He basically just eagled that hole. Yeah, it's such a, an MJ with a very textbook thirty footer right there. But I can't stress it enough, guys. Slow down, Zach's putt. It's so smooth. Mm -hmm. There's no mechanical components involved in it. It's just very simple. I kind of, I, I really like to compare yours and his putt because you have very. I mean, not to say you're not smooth. You almost left it a little high there. A little bit. Not to say you're not smooth, but you are very motion based. You know what I mean? A lot right. of it is like it's like clockwork, where you have your thing and it's like it connects at the end. Whereas Zach's is like a cloud putting. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. So graceful. Just it is so it graceful. It's really, it's really like a. That's what I love about disc golf, though. Yep. You know, there's no one way to do it. Nope. It's whatever gets the disc into the basket. Yep. <laughs> He's probably not very happy. This is definitely one of the more easy holes on the course. Yeah, certainly scoreable. But the fact that he had a birdie look from hole one's fairway is pretty incredible. Yeah, and it does not get any easier from there, though. You said that one was a very scoreable hole. This one is just an adventure from the start. 714 foot. You're playing really over these two rolling hills. Um, the valley at the bottom is a pretty popular landing zone, especially if you hit anything, it right. generally will filter down into that ravine or near it. Um, the second shot, though, up through these trees and then down on the slope, the trench behind the basket really being the only forgiving part of the hole. Yeah, that's very true, actually. There's a lot of unforgiving parts about this hole. That's what you want to do, kind of. Um, MJ didn't get it. I, I wouldn't say that he didn't turn it quite enough. I think it was just a little wide. Yeah. What looks like this one as well, coming in a little wide. It's going to have to get lucky. Yeah, that one had maybe a degree of stability at the end that yep. wouldn't have, you know, was less than ideal. But you're on that. if you're on that left side, it's workable. Right. You know what I mean? The, the bad miss is short right, or if you kick a tree and shoot way off to the left. Now, Zach with his hyzer hugged the, all of the left side of the fairway, worked all the way to the right side. That's, that's probably scorable. Yeah, that's fine, but it's not like he's not sitting there with a nice – throw up to the basket he's gonna have to you know react oh, right man mm -hmm. talking about react that's the miss you don't want that short left kick yeah so this is what he's looking down right here guys nah he walks it off he nah. knows it that's not chill that is un that's an unbelievable shot 
on Heiser, flip up, up, flat, draw left, miss the tree, all the way down. He's 80 to 100 feet away. It's I would say currently that's his best shot of the day. More than hole seven with the eagle? That's tough. It, those those shots are almost the same, except this one was with the distance driver, whereas the, uh, yes. the other one was with the eagle. So. Covered a little bit more ground with this one. You know, Maybe you give it to this one. This hole is the second hardest hole on the course, coming in at a 4.34 average. Oh so it's gosh. not easy. It's so easy to get off the fairway. And what's funny is the first shot is the easier part yeah. of the hole. The second shot is where there are tons of trees. Scrambling comes into play. It kind of reminds me of... Uh, it's like if you can execute the first shot well enough, it turns it into a fairly easy hole. But <laughs> Greg Barsby trying to drop in an insane birdie three from no scoring position whatsoever. With the homie Rhino at that. Yeah, that was great. Man, if he would have put that one in, that would have been just like legendary. Legendary. <laughs> Run it down, Greg, hair flowing. Like that's a moment right there. Yeah. MJ actually giving that a better bid than I thought mm -hmm. from up top. Like you said, that ditch is back there, so most big time players will be running this putt with without too much to worry. Come on. Mm. Oh, that was such a weird reaction off the basket, but it looked like it caught left side nub. Yeah, never quite committed to the putt, probably. Yeah, had good flight though. I mean, it came out of your hand clean. Had good flight. Mm -hmm. Dropping in. I, th I believe this is going to be a star par, which is very good on this hole. I mean, it's bringing down the average, so you guys exactly. are doing your part. Yep. Yeah, and just, I mean, Greg hit basket for three, but even just a four from where he is is miraculous. Absolutely. As you just can't undersell or oversell that second shot more. Yeah, that's so big time, getting all the way down the fairway to have an easy little flick approach for your par. There you see it, yeah, all-star par, fours across the board. We're hoping for not fours across the board on this one, though. 297 feet. Um, it is the shortest, I believe it's the shortest hole on the course, um, and definitely very scorable. This is where that turkey gulch um, that you had never had a chance to play, maybe thank goodness, but this is that same real estate, um, just really playing backwards on it. Yeah, very fun line that MJ just absolutely loves. I think he's playing a very smart shot there. He's definitely throwing a Comet, mm -hmm. and he pushed it straight, which is kind of what you want to do if you just want to have a putt at the hole. Yes, and you don't fiddle with these trees on the right side, where if you kick them and mm -hmm. shoot right, that's OB. That's, you know, it's a nice shot. Yes, that's where this hole can turn into a nightmare. I'm just trying to follow MJ to a T. I turned it a little bit more, and that's the result. Yep, yeah, you had a little bit more air on He took that straight direct route, whereas you kind of lofted it a bit and let it work all the way to the right. It's a very cool hole. There's this inside line that all of us took there. Now, for Zach, though, that needs to get down because that is headed to the OB. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's like it goes from ace run to OB so quick with that big spike angle. I, I prefer this low line, more like what Greg's doing. Yeah, and Greg just hits it. What? Hits a rock? Yeah, I was going to say, specifically. <laughs> wow, that thing just stopped it in its tracks. That thing, he should have a 10-footer. Yeah, that was a filleted line by mm -hmm. Greg. Here's Zach. He's going to try to take his three with his step putt. Mm, uphill. Good set, at least, but... yeah. Yeah, not not a hole you're chalking up to a four though. It's the OB's there, but I don't. It's not in my mind when I'm playing it. You know. Was there ever a doubt, Kevin? Uh, I didn't have a doubt. That's for sure. <laughs> He's just on fire with the putt right now. He sure is. He's dropping them in from everywhere. I need to I need to get on that ponytail hat game, man. It's pretty impressive. There's definitely something to be said about it. That's maybe a good not putt. good, but something. <laughs> Good putt, though, by MJ, cleaning up his Comet shot. All that's left is, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I get, like, terrified from, like, 16-footers after everyone's cleaned up their stuff, and you're just the last one to tap in. It's like, all right, go ahead, finish up, finish up. And it's like, this ain't, this ain't a tap in. Right. Come <laughs> on. Poor Zach is gonna lose those two strokes uh, to the to the card here, and and you know more than a stroke to the field as that one does play under par. Yeah. Hole 17, Kevin. 
it's it's like a par four version of hole five. That's what I've cut, it's come down to. For yeah, me. except it plays yeah. uphill instead of downhill. Right. But it's that really tight line off the tee. Really, it's like a net straight. Whatever you got that's going net straight, mm -hmm. throw it. Yeah, I agree. Anything straight is good uh, right here, guys. Hitting early and kicking wherever is problems. Yeah, if you can, ideally the righty backhand um, will filter a little bit to the left, opening up that line uh, to the basket. Like this is probably a little farther left than he wants, but... Just slightly. Just slightly. Just slightly. Oh... Uh, Started off probably a little more flat than you'd like, but yeah, it's a gap hit at least. No, exactly, and that's that's step number yeah. absolute step number one. Greg, I've seen this played a few times. How how good is he gonna do it? Um, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he Back. hit it on a hyzer, and he stood it up to just past flat right there. That is, there's not much room for error on that shot. No. The, the issue with the sidearm, and he played it fine, but that is the issue, right? It's yeah. going to snuggle you up on those trees to the right side um, and force. Now, he made his way his way, way up there. Yeah. So he's not going to be quite as pinched, but those small trees to the right can get in your head. Yeah. That spot Zach landed is a great spot. Yep. Nice and open place to attack it from, and he should have a look at a birdie. Yep, MJ yeah. kind of, he's reduced to that flick up the hill, but it's pretty good work, um, you know, all things considered. Yeah, definitely getting up there. Now, I'm off the fairway to the right here. Oh. Caught the last limb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some frustration being showed right there. That was a very small gap. Yeah, I mean, you've thrown so many good lines. You've, you've thrown a lot of good shots. It's just, you know, it catches the last leaf or the one tree in the middle of the fairway. It's, you know. Yeah. Oh, watch out, Brian. Getting attacked. Where is it at? Oh, boom. There it is. Boom. Boom. Easy bird. Drop in. This awesome. is where Greg's drive landed? Yeah, I was going to say, he actually isn't quite as pinched as I thought he no, was. No, that's a great place to be. He's probably dropping in for mm -hmm. a birdie. Yeah. MJ. MJ again kind of set up with one of those hero lines to hit a good putt. But yeah, just a little convert. too much in the way, it seems like. Yeah, thanks for coming. Greg making this one. hole look easy. This hole is extremely difficult, especially if you get off the fairway. But to us, or to Greg, apparently it's just a straight shot, <laughs> straight flick, and then a putter up shot, drop in bird. Easy peasy. He's two down through two days on 17. Oh, wow, that's incredible. I'd love yes. to see three down. That'd be incredible execution. I, I mean, I, it's just such a demanding shot. It can't emphasize it enough. Yeah. Greg down there just smiling, man. Get this. Stay in this mood always. I'm, yeah. I'm, honestly, I'm a firm believer. I think since Barsby won Worlds, I think we're going to see a lot of that. Yeah. Forever. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? I agree. Like, job's done. <laughs> you know? To a, to a degree. To a degree it sure is. And he can just now play disc golf stress-free for the most part. <laughs> Now, he's 10 down coming into an eagleable par 5, hole 18. Yes. 10 down? Like, that's incredible. That's smoking hot. Now, should be stated, Paul's also 10 down. All right. On the lead card. Going into stroke eight. apart, going into 18. Yep. So, do we go for the eagle? Do we play it safe for the birdie? You know. I don't know. I think the 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 birdie play is the eagle play almost. Exactly. I mean, you you just throw it hard and then react from there. And now that's the eagle play right there. It's just like that. Ha, that's perfect. Yeah. It's not hard. Yeah, just like that. You know, just rip it 400 feet through the gap and up onto the hill. Yeah, this gap is very small, by the way. And the way I understand it, there used to be a tree guarding the way Greg just went. Yes, this is the first event that hasn't had it. Okay. I like how the hole plays right now. Yeah, MJ, that, that's the line that you kind of had to take okay. with that tree hanging over that left side. You could get crazy aggressive, but there's just no sense to do it. Yep. There wasn't any sense. That had a little too much hyzer on it, but a great result. Mm -hmm. Yo, you'll take the kick. Absolutely. You're still in birdie position. Yeah. And this is a shot where you want to just kind of get up there, drag that disc a little bit to the right like it is right there. Yeah, that, that's what I want right there. I don't want to get into the woods at all. Then it makes that upshot hard, but I'm looking straight at it. Now MJ looking to match, if not best you, in the flippy putter department, and... He does. He does. 
He does. That's prime time. And that yeah. is such a good shot. Yeah, that's an MJ shot. I was right gonna there. say in his element. Mm-hmm. Look at Zach has now pinched himself way down there off that drive. See him peeking through the woods and that's a good shot. I think he threw a flippy truth. He says he never flicks side or um mid ranges, hardly really? ever. And that was a truth that time. Oh man, I got words for him. The P Mac truth is the best mid range to flick. <laughs> Lining up the eagle, we saw him throw on hole seven. And look at that thing draw from yeah. left to right, from right to left. That is just so good. Back it up, Brian, so we can see. I mean, he's inside the circle, and that's his eagle putt right there. I, and another incredible sidearm. He's playing out of his mind right now. Yeah, he is. He's lacing shots all over the place. Great upshot by Zach. And after that drive, this like that he's gonna have a birdie after that. Yeah, that's great. Two rounds in a row, he scrambled from a nightmare drive to a birdie. Here. Yeah, that's great scrambling from Zach. Whew, quality shot that for a sec. I thought might have a chance of going in. Yeah, about chain high. Good little run on it. MJ. Purple banger. Next to the pin. Not a doubt. Now Greg with a chance to go 12 here. Whoa. And, uh, and that's, I think, genuinely his first. I mean, other than the drive on 14, that's probably the only other misstep. Yeah, definitely the first putting mishap yeah. we've seen. It's nice to finish with a birdie. Yep, and tapping in a nice round. I mean, five sure. down. Obviously, you want to shoot hotter than that, right? You want to yeah. put a run on the, on, the, on the top guys. But five down is nothing to scoff at. Absolutely. And Greg going to tap in his... <laughs> <laughs> you see me going back. AJ in the Has background. lost his mind with his target <laughs> delivery. Greg, let's not take away from Greg's 11 under par. Oh, my goodness. Star frame to end, and that's going to yeah. move him to 17 down overall. Uh, and we'll, we're going to see here just in a sec that he's in position to make a run at this thing. Him and Paul are kind of running away. He is without a doubt. Paul is going to finish at 18 under par after the two rounds. But Greg Barsby sitting at 17. They're right there, neck and neck. Um, you know, got a few other guys, 14 down. We are going to have a pretty fun card, though, on our chase card hands. Kevin, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're not going to have you again. But we've got the likes of Patrick Brown, the likes of uh, Eagle McMahon, a guy that I think a few people have heard of. Um, and then, I don't know, some guy named Seppo Paiu, <laughs> the homie. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got an absolute awesome card for you guys. Yeah, Kevin. that's a stacked card, man. I think it's going to be really exciting with everybody being so close coming down to the final round. I think everybody should tune in. Round three. Yes. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me, man. I had a blast. I hope you did too. Yeah, it was a complete pleasure for me, and I hope to have another chance at it. Sweet, man. Well, hey, shoot well today. Um, we're about to wrap this up and head to the course. Um, but that's all we got for round two here at the 2018 Ed Hedrick Hall of Fame Classic.